Grace be upon you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, it is the sixth Sunday of Easter and we are here worshiping our Lord. Let us continue. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of the Holy Scriptures. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Tros and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and, there, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please read with us Psalm 67 on page 675 of your prayer book. May God be merciful to us and bless us. 
Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For your judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. reading from the Revelation to John. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. The gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night they need no light of the lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and they will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it occurs, you may believe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One day, an artist was commissioned by a wealthy man to paint something that would depict peace. After a great deal of thought, the artist painted a beautiful country scene. There were green fields with cows standing in them, like right down the road. Birds are flying in the blue sky, and a lovely little village lay in a distant valley. The artist gave the painting to the man, but there was a look of disappointment on the patron's face. The man said to the artist, this is not a picture of true peace. It just isn't right. Go back and try again. The artist went back to his studio, thought for several hours about peace, then went to his canvas and began to paint. When he was finished, there was a, on the canvas a beautiful picture of a mother holding a sleeping baby, that one's not sleeping right now, <laughs> holding a sleepy baby in her arms, smiling lovingly at the child. He thought, surely, this is true peace, and hurried to give the painting to the, to the patron. But the, again, the man said, this is better, but it isn't quite what I wanted as true peace. So he refused the painting, and asked the painter to try once again. The artist returned to his studio. He was discouraged, he was tired, and he was disappointed. Anger swelled inside of him because he felt the rejection of this wealthy patron. This time, he even prayed for inspiration. Inspire me, Lord, to know that picture of true peace. Then, all of a sudden, an idea came, and he rushed to the canvas and began to paint as he had never painted before. When he finished, he hurried to the wealthy patron and gave him the painting. The man studied it carefully for several minutes, which seemed like hours. The artist held his breath. Then the man said, now this is true peace. He accepted the painting and paid the artist. What was this painting of true peace? The painting showed a stormy sea pounding against a cliff. The artist had captured the fury of the wind as it whipped back the black, cloud, rain cloud, black rain clouds, which were laced with streaks of lightning. The sea was roaring in turmoil. The waves were crashing. The dark sky was filled with the power of a ferocious th thunderstorm. And in the center of the picture 
under a cliff, the artist had painted a small bird, safe and dry, in her nest, snuggled safely in the rocks. The bird was at peace amidst the storm that raged about her. Amidst the storms that raged about her. We are ending our 50 days of Easter as we hear in John's words that Jesus is telling the disciples that he is leaving, but not leaving him without resources. Jesus is telling us today that he will never leave us in a lurch depending on our own selves. Even our colic today calls us to love Jesus so fully that we may might obtain his promises to us, which will exceed all that we could possibly desire. John's words say that Jesus will be with the disciples and with us in the presence of the Comforter, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. And again, he tells us, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For you that remember your world history, you might just remember Ferdinand Magellan. He truly understood that peace when in 1521, he battled for an entire year to find a passage around South America. There at the very tip of the continent, in its icy waters, he encountered some of the worst weather anywhere on Earth. Raging seas, towering ice floes, a mutinous crew plagued his efforts. When he finally made his way through these straits, known today as the Straits of Magellan, he entered a great body of water that lay beyond. Then he and his men lifted their faces to heaven and gave thanks to God. Magellan named the ocean the peaceful one, the Pacific Ocean. I discovered a newfound love for this ocean as I walked along the cliffs next to it many years ago. Jesus tells us that, we, that he also will lead us into that peaceful, peaceful place. Let not your, let not your hearts be troubled neither let him be afraid. Most of us are plagued with fear within ourselves and within our world, especially these last few years. The late advice columnist Ann Landers would receive more than 10,000 letters per month. When asked what seemed to be the most common topic, she answered that most people seem to be afraid of something, fear, of something. Mostly they were afraid of losing their health, their job, their family. Many of us are even afraid when there's no reason to be afraid. Psychologists agree that the one of the earliest emotions that every human being experiences is the feeling of fear. At that time there's a fear of falling, the fear of loud noises, and the fear of abandonment. As we mature, we're able to deal fairly well with two of those fears, that of falling and loud noises. But that fear of abandonment, that fear of being left all alone, the fear of having no one who cares for us, is a fear that many of us share. Mother Teresa stated, we think that poverty is as a being, people being hungry, naked, and homeless. The poverty of being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for is true poverty. To all of us who have had that fear of being ad abandoned, left alone, we are the ones that Jesus is speaking to this morning. Jesus says, I will never abandon you, ever, no matter what. And we have all been through it in these last few years. I will never leave you alone. I am going to my Father, yet I will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. 
When Jesus gathered his best friends, his disciples, and told them these words, he wanted them to know that they were his, they belonged to him. At that time, he gave them a new identity, a sense of inner peace that, that the world would never, ever take away from them. And that's exactly what he does for us. We belong to God. We are God's. God wants us to have a sense of peace, a new identity, and a direction for living no matter how long we have on this earthly life. Now we each have a choice to accept this inner peace given only by God or not to accept it. Brothers and sisters, don't spoil this love offering of God's. It's like throwing the wishbone away before the wish is even granted. It might seem difficult at times. At times, it might seem even impossible. But even our feeble efforts will be strengthened by the love of our Father, that same divine Father whose love is revealed in Jesus Christ. And when we allow that divine love to flow through us, we enter into a mystical communion. Nothing should be more desirable for us than that. We've been given these 50 days of Easter to, to begin to acknowledge the authority and the peace of that Holy Spirit that Jesus speaks of today. And then he told to Thomas and the others as he walked into that upper room. Very soon it will be Pentecost. The wind will blow, blow, blow. Will we be ready to let that wind of the Holy Spirit fill our sails and send us off to God's next great adventure? You see, we are like Magellan, for we are brought closer to God and the Spirit of God, and therefore will receive promises greater than all we could possibly, possibly desire or even imagine. And perhaps we can imagine it, a little bit of it, as we read in our psalm today, because there will be gladness and singing of joy. All peoples praising God. All the earth will be blessed. And then we will stand in awe, in awe of the beauty and love of our utmost Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. And oh, what a day that will be. Such joy. Amen. We reaffirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, you the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, in the name of the Father, I am in God, and in light, true God from true God, begotten, not vain, being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, and down from heaven. I empower the Holy Spirit, in the name incarnate of the Mary, and was made man. Safe beneath his heart and the conscious heart, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge, living in the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead. The world to come. Amen.
Amen. In this season of Easter rejoicing, let us offer our prayers and thanksgivings for the church and the world, saying, O God of love, raise us a new life in Christ. For the well-being of your creation, that we may promote its ability to offer praise to you through spacious skies, bountiful seas, verdant land, and precious creatures, great and small. O God of love, raise us to a new life in Christ. For the life of the church, that our generous witness may broaden your table as all find a place to live and grow in love. We pray for Carla, Richard, Dick, Dee, and Lisa, and for Michael, Dabney, and Douglas. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. George's Bradenton, St. Giles, Pinellas Park, St. Hilary's, Fort Myers, St. James, Port Charlotte, and St. James House of Prayer, Tampa. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. O God of love, For the welfare of your world, that all leaders and people, young and old, will strive to live together in harmony while serving the common good. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Ron, our governor, and for those in the military, Miguel, Charles, Travis, Mike, Dennis, Matt, and Jake. O oh God of love, For all who suffer any violence, pain, or grief, that they may know the comfort of your presence as you wipe every tear from their eyes. We pray for Coquina, Pam, Ken, Amy, Dick, Elaine, Emily, Anne, Jackie, Jan, Kimberly, Karen, Natasha, Myra, Zeke, Elizabeth, Al, Dick, Carol, Sarome, Shirley, Susan, Travis, Tara, Ed and Edie, Bobby, Heather, and Christopher. And for Jean, Claudia, Chris, Jamie, Crystal, Linda, and Melanie. O oh God of love, for the love made known to us in Jesus Christ through this community, and for this in all blessings, we give you thanks and praise. We pray especially for our outreach ministries, Crafters for Hope, Sure, St. Wilfred's Food Pantry, and Ashton Elementary School. O oh God of love, for all who have died, especially those being buried this week in Buffalo, that you will bring them to the fullness of your joy, where mourning and pain will be no more. O oh God of love, For so many blessings and for answered prayers, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with our growing in our spirit prayer. Together, almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our congregation. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to, uh, you to join me in thanking and welcoming Reverend D for joining us again this week and next. It's wonderful to be here. I um, served y'all when I left Church of the Annunciation, my last full-time ministry. And I was here like three weeks after I left that church. 
um, through January of 2016, a couple weeks before Carla came. So it's been a while since I've been at your altar, and I'm honored to be here. I just wanted you to know that next Sunday after I left here, I met some medical people down in San Pedro Sula, Honduras, and on that week that we were there, we opened up and began a, a clinic for children of the slums, and we've been doing that all the way through 2019, and we'll continue to do it later on in 2022. So I just wanted you to know that I wasn't just sitting around. <laughs> 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 no, I, I've been doing interims and supplies um, since, and I, I was delighted when Carla um, you know, called and said, hey, how about coming out to St. Mark of Scotland? I said, sure, you know, so <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you, and welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> um, just a couple of announcements. Um, we have some comfort bags to bless this morning, um, and we greatly appreciate all of you who work on that ministry. It's, it's becoming more and more and more important to our community. Um, and a couple of things from outreach. Um, number one, this is Bar Soap Month for St. Wilfred's Food Pantry. Um, they are still going like gangbusters with feeding about 100 families every week. Um, so the bar soap and the toilet paper and the tissue are things that food stamps don't provide, per provide for the purchase of, and that the food pantry, or the food bank, excuse me, does not have in supply. So it's really important that we do those things. In addition to that, Outreach wanted, you to, wanted me to remind you all that if you're traveling this summer and you stay in a hotel and you get those little amenities, the shampoo, the conditioner, the soap, and you don't use them, please squirrel them in your suitcase and bring them back to us because then we can take those over to um, Resurrection House and they can make up personal care kits for the unhoused. And those um, hotel size amenities are just the ideal size for that ministry. So just a reminder of that. Um, one last thing, um, on Saturday the 28th, um, we will be, um, this coming Saturday, we will be planting flags at National Cemetery. So if there's a couple of spots open, um, please see me after the service or, see, or give Sue Lamastro a call. Um, bring water, a hat, and a four inch Phillips head screwdriver and you can join us in placing um, flags at National this weekend. All right, thank you. Yes, Len. In addition to those hotel amenities that you may or may not use, when, the, when you go to the dentist and they, and they give you a free toothbrush and toothpaste and you say, oh, no, no, I have my own, please grab those anyways because those are even more important. Um, those are in much more short supply and um, your manual toothbrushes and a little uh, dental floss and toothpaste is, would be a really boon for that ministry. Last but not least, Marla. Just real quick, the Thursday night craft night, 6 to 9, Palm mm -hmm. Spring Branch. I think there was another person. Oh. I am very touched by these bags. Before I went into seminary, I worked down at the University of Miami Cancer Center. And 
without a doubt, I know that these type things are not just cute, they are so useful. And, um, and so the blankets are welcome to, too, but things like this that help with post-op tubing and, the thing, and uh, other things that happen after surgery for cancer, are, it's amazing. I, I'm very impressed that y'all are doing this. So, um, O oh God, whose blessed Son has sanctified and trans transfigured the use of material things, receive these comfort bags which we offer and grant that it may proclaim your love, benefit your church, and minister grace and joy to those who use them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handing over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the mor memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen hallelujah christ our passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast hallelujah The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I forgot an announcement. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. If you wish to have your host intincted for communion so that you get both the bread and the wine in one bite, please line up along this side of the altar. If you wish to drink from the common cup, please line up on this side of the altar. Okay, everybody got it? Come up single file, make your choice. And if you do not want to drink at all, you can line up on this side and just cross your arms. Okay, and we will say a blessing over you. Already? The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, Jesus. <laughs>
Let us give thanks and pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living in remembrance of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now in the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our wonderful presiding bishop, Bishop Michael Curry, always ends every single service with God love you, God bless you, and God always hold you in the palm of, the, of his hands. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.